Yes, give me more, Gwen Stacy. More spider people. Mmm, tasty. Yo, welcome back to the channel, and today I've got some good eating, especially if you're into some, mmm, some scrumptious, spidey sustenance. Today we're talking about Spider Gwen, Gwenverse. But before we get into the meat and taters of this review, let me remind you real quick, like, subscribe, do the YouTube thing, you know, you know. So I friggin' loved issue one of this. I loved Gwen, I loved the premise, I loved the writing, I loved the artwork. Oh, I really, I just love this comic. This is the first comic with Ghost Spider that I've read. So other than like the Into the Spider-Verse movie, I know basically nothing about Ghost Spider. Even though this first issue was all set up, which I think they did really well on, this comic opens up in Gwen's home universe. As she puts it, she lives in a low super world. The comic gets going as Gwen defeats what we learn is a longtime villain, the Bodega Bandit. It's really cool here because I learned her suit is like Venom, like it's a symbiote. Also how she puts it on before fighting is really cool, like how Luffy like casually goes into gear too. Cool introduction, quick fight scene before we move along, we're introduced to Gwen's bandmate, MJ, like shout out MJ, Gwen's father, and the fact that she casually travels through the multiverse. Oh, and how Peter Parker died trying to be like her. <gasps> Nani? So, in another world, at the end of time, we meet our main villain villains, who after gathering some artifacts that will help build the big baddie, a machine, so she can live forever through memes, yes, live forever through memes, these villains zap Gwen as she is casually strolling through the space between multiverses. This results in Gwen unknowingly changing the timeline as Gwen becomes alternative versions of other famous superheroes. And the first one we get to meet is Thor Gwen. The writer does a really good job of writing the character we know as Gwen as Thor Gwen. And it's really cool. It reminds me of how there are like different Ricks and Mortys across alternate dimensions. So it works out really, really well and it doesn't feel like just dumb gender swapping or something like that. I also really appreciate that outside of the physical antagonists within the issue, Gwen also is fighting in kind of an internal battle as well. That's kind of the meta conflict between Spider Gwen and Thor Gwen here to start out. So I really look forward to seeing where that goes. Really cool potential rogues gallery. The book doesn't take itself too seriously. Really fitting for the tone and setting. The reason for the whole Gwenverse part of it was fitting for the story I felt like. While, my, while some might feel like it's kind of dumb, it isn't really the meat and potatoes of where this comic seems to want to go. I'm really hooked, ready for issue 2 of this limited series to come out. As always, thanks for watching.